Picture this. Roger Moore is a feline, fond, woman-averse, straight whiskey-guzzling figure. Does that really pique your interest? Well, if it does, you're in for a treat in today's episode of The Film Files. In this episode, we're diving deep into the unconventional world of the 1980 action film, North Sea Hijack, a film known to our American friends by its alternative titles, Folks, or Assault Force. And yes, the cast isn't complete without the talent of Anthony Perkins and the remarkable James Mason. In a stark departure from his usual sophisticated ladies' man persona, Moore takes on the character of Rufus Excalibur Folks, an eccentric counter-terrorist consultant with an unusual affinity for cats. Picture this a shabbily dressed man who prefers the company of felines to females, consuming his whiskey neat, straight from the bottle. I can already hear your curiosity piqued, wondering how a character as unconventional as folks could win anyone's trust. Well, believe it or not, the esteemed Lloyds of London place their faith in him to design a contingency plan, safeguarding the North Sea oil installations they ensure. As you might have guessed, a group of criminals led by Anthony Perkins cast their devious eyes on the installations. They hijack a supply ship bound for an oil rig named Jennifer, implant limpet mines on the rig, and an associated supply rig, and then audaciously demand a ransom of 25 million pounds from the British government. Initially hesitant, the British government eventually agrees to employ the eccentric yet astute folks under the persuasive pressure of Lloyd's. His mission? To neutralize the terrorists. Folks, under the watchful eye of Admiral Brinson, portrayed by the ever charming James Mason, sets off to Jennifer to defuse this volatile situation. What's even more fascinating about North Sea Hijack is its origin. The plot of this film is adapted from the 1979 novel Esther, Ruth, and Jennifer by Jack Davies. The book's title intriguingly represents a supply ship, a drilling rig, and an oil platform, all under the ominous threat of destruction by the villains. The directorial reigns of this film were handled by Andrew V. McLaglin, who, fun fact, directed Roger Moore a year prior in The Wild Geese. Jack Davies, a good friend of Moore, also penned down the script. Moore, on reading an early draft of Davies's novel, immediately recognized its cinematic potential and championed its film adaptation. Interestingly, Richard Harris was initially considered for the role of folks. But, weary of playing action heroes, he graciously stepped aside recommending more for the lead. And while we can't help but appreciate Anthony Perkins' performance as the villain, it's intriguing to imagine what Robert Mitchum or Donald Sutherland would have brought to the role, having been considered before Perkins. North Sea Hijack, despite its unique premise and star-studded cast, fell short of expectations at the box office following its release in April 1980. Critics mostly gave it lukewarm reviews. So what's my verdict on North Sea Hijack? Well, it's not a very good movie. Roger Moore may have been many things, but he was not a very good actor, to be honest. He is pretty much always in Bond mode for me. And folks, well, he is not a very sympathetic protagonist. He drinks whiskey straight from the bottle and hates women, and is generally unpleasant. Unless you are a cat, that is. Now, I get that Moore wanted to distance himself from Bond as much as possible. I wish they had done it another way, though. But the biggest issue with the movie is that nothing much happens in it. There is not a lot of action, and in an action movie that is quite a problem. I also feel that the film suffers from some quite mediocre model work. The platforms and ships at times look rather unconvincing to me. That's all for today's episode of The Film Files. Join us next time as we unearth more intriguing tales from the vast world of cinema. Until then, keep watching and keep exploring.